and away we go. In the heart of a world forgotten by time, a family lost, torn from the safety of their world, now stranded in a land where the that's fucking of reality that's beautiful bend. fucking artwork. Here, the past and future collide in a savage wilderness filled with primal terror. The Marshall family, brave survivors, fighting to return home. Rick, the strong-willed leader, a man forged by hardship and driven by an unbreakable will to protect his family. Will, the determined son, hardened by the trials of a world far beyond his years. And Holly, fearless in the face of danger, a spirit untamed by the savagery of this lost world. Their only ally, Chaka, <laughs> a mysterious being from another age. If you're if you're my age, you remember this land. Stuff. But they are not alone. Beneath the ancient ground, the reptilian sleep stacks rise from the darkness. Cold-blooded merciless hunters. Their hiss fills the air with dread. Sleep stacks. The Zarn, a cold and calculating alien that can read thoughts and emotions to manipulate minds. And from the darkest corners of the land, the pylons pulse with otherworldly power. They hold the key to the marshal's escape, but their secrets twist reality, warping time and space into deadly traps. The land of the lost. Oh, that's where nice. every step. That was a cool looking uh, giant lizard. Arr. All right. And our main attraction. Alright, so um this is um if you're familiar with uh the Cthulhu Mythos as a whole, you might be you might be familiar with the King in Yellow. Uh, you might also, um, recognize the name, um, if you watch True Detective Season 1, um, like, um, uh, and also you might remember, uh, recognize this as an SCP entry, um, for The Hanged King. Um, I, yes, The Hanged King. Um, so, this is the only attempt to premiere the king in yellow in 1895 by anomaly toward the end of the 19th century the parisian theater scene experienced a period of transition and creative fervor marked by the coexistence of diverse aesthetic and dramatic currents during this decade, symbolist and naturalist theater emerged as the most prominent movements on Parisian stages, though there was also room for bourgeois theater and comedies of manners. One of the key figures in symbolist theater was Maurice Maeterlinck, whose plays like Lanchus 1890 and Palais et Melisande 1893 dominated the scene. These works, with their poetic language and enigmatic atmosphere, departed from the realism of the time focusing instead on psychological introspection and existential mystery. Anakasane, the promising young playwright of Catalan origin, had begun his career under the guidance and careful evaluation of the renowned Metterling. After successfully assisting with the stage direction and dramatic adaptation of Paladine and Palomides in 1894, Cassane decided to form his own theater company. Enjoying growing fame and interest in his work, the Central Company received funding that same year from André Antoine Théâtre Libre, where they made their independent debut with Lantrus à Barcelone, an adaptation developed in collaboration with Metrolink. The production was so well received by the public that André Antoine himself commissioned a bold project from the young Cassinet. It was none other than the daring play The King in Yellow, 
published at the end of 1894 in two volumes, chronicling its controversy with religious and political authorities of the time, the play was split into two parts, with the second postponed for publication until mid-1895. Amid the uproar, André Antoine instructed Cassane to have his central company work on the first two acts during the first half of 1895, while Antoine negotiated for the early release of the contentious second part. The work on the first two acts proved to be a challenge for Cassane, who was determined to present a faithful representation of the original play. This, however, required the staging of a palace from a non-existent city with cosmic characteristics. The unusual nature of the task inspired him to delve deeply into the play, which had already sparked unprecedented interest among critics and readers with just its first two acts. After working tirelessly on the first part, both in rehearsals and in designing and assembling the eerie sets, Arnaud Cassanet faced harsh criticism from the church. It was the first time in many years that the ecclesiastical world had intervened in the theater. And though their warnings did not intimidate either Antoine or Cassanet, the latter received a death threat in a letter. Along with the letter came an attempted kidnapping one night in May. By the time André Antoine had secured the controversial second part, Arnaud Cassanet had decided to step away from theater and delegate the completion of The King in Yellow for its premiere. Overwhelmed by the threats and a rapidly deteriorating state of health, Cassane found himself unable to endure such afflictions. It was the night of July 9, 1895, under the dramaturgical direction of Ocean Dion, that the King in Yellow premiered behind closed doors at the Théâtre Lille. The audience, composed of special guests whose identities were kept secret, witnessed the performance. The interludes were musically accompanied on the piano by the composer Ignace Dallier, who tragically passed away a month after the premiere, though the exact circumstances of his death were never fully clarified. On the night of the premiere, with the press speculating, following a leak, that Arnaud Cassanet would be present, Cassanet chose to flee after the conclusion of the first act. He disappeared and was never seen again. Before the start of the third act, André Antoine was informed that both the original version of the play, stored in his office, and a couple of valuable relics from his safe had been stolen. It is said that Antoine erupted in fury, resulting in a horrifying altercation midway through the third act, which led to the play being halted. Details of the incident remain unclear, and reliable information is scarce. It is said that Arnaud Cassane fled to Argentina, with the only script of the King in Yellow that same year, and after the disaster at the play's private premiere, no further attempts were made to stage it again. Some claim that the alleged altercation never happened, and that a horrific accident forced the performance to be halted. The only piece of evidence supporting this version is the medical report of Herbert Mignolet, the actor who portrayed the stranger in the play. Mm. It is known that he suffered severe burns to his face that night, leaving him disfigured until his death three years later. Ah. Aside from this, official records from the time often omit the theater's activities between 1895 and 1896, a matter of ongoing debate due to the contradictory nature of the evidence and testimony. So, um, if you want more information about The King in Yellow, uh, I would go here also to the SCP article uh, about the hanged uh, man, uh, or the hanged king, uh, and uh, The King in Yellow, all that stuff. Like, it's a fascinating read. Um, and there's a number of articles about it, as you can see. So, that was uh, the only attempt to premiere The King in Yellow in 1895 by Anomaly. I'm uh, pleased to see him doing some uh, 
Cthulian work. I mean, he does some stuff in that realm a lot, but this is specifically, it was, it's nice. Kudos, good sir. Um, like, subscribe, share, follow, check out Anomaly, and uh, he's got a couple of channels. Um, yeah, go to it. Uh, be safe. Be sa Be happy. Not sappy. Be healthy. Uh, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.